There was a lot of it. Um, so for this unit, what I thought was more in, was most interesting was the uh, description of the retina and the cells in it. I mean, I've certainly studied the path of, um, you know, from light to sight, if you will, in a few classes. <clears throat> And some of this before also in in foundations of perception, which I'm taking at the same time. So there's some overlap, but um, it's, it's it's always an interesting sort of thing if you are seeing that process from you know rods and cones to the bipolar cells to the retinal ganglion cells, and and you have the horizontal cells, and they ended up um, actually deciding to look a little bit deeper into that just because um, to find more of the function of the horizontal and the amacrine cells so I ended up doing a little thing learning about the just on and off center of bipolar cells just myself and how that's affected by the horizontal cells you know um, altering them it's which is something I had heard a little bit about before in foundations of perception um, although it is that it begin to look at it a little bit more deeply um, just, just because of this so I see based on module 10 looks like we're seeing more about um, those processes and lateral inhibition so that's definitely good again but again I just read it in, in response I wanted to see more about how the lateral communication worked and what exactly the you know bipolar cells were doing once they you have this whole process they stop releasing glutamate so i wanted to see how that actually you know was affecting the bipolar cells and then you see okay it's a, you know that constant in darkness you have a constant glutamate signal triggering the activation of off of the off bipolar cells with glutamate not being released and that allows the on bipolar cells to activate because they're no longer inhibited which the otherwise previously would be so it's, you know it's that and that's a signal transduction process. I mean, that's where you're going to, which is, it's amazing. Because, I mean, it's every, every different kind of, you know, sensory perception has this, right? This has to have a mechanism where eventually we get some nervous signal out of what's otherwise, my hair's really off right now, out of what's otherwise a, you know, a physical signal. And this is that. It's a very interesting thing. I mean, how this is. Well, this is occurring this is the this is the moment of transition of, of change in it same as you know when you have you know at some point an analog signal in the computer that gets converted into a digital signal um it's not quite identical but it reminds me of that at some point you just have the physical signal in the world that has to be turned into this you know encoded information um and is that then that's everything you know once that happens everything has gone from just the sensation to you know that thing that goes to the brain that's when you've gone into the brain interpreting that you know but all of it's still from a, from a physical root all of it come you know all of it is for everything of interpretation it's all based you know on physical real information that is the window we have to the world around us of just understanding what we got, you know, never knowing with any certainty that it's, you know, real per se, but trying as best we can with what we have, you know, um, to understand things around us. And, you know, in case it is real, we must understand it for the sake of our own, you know, advancement, right? So we end up with all that. You know, philosophical there, but so yeah, it was an interesting um, module.